Today, we're testing Koala Sampler on a budget Android phone. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Galactic Tapes. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. If you're an iOS user, there are a plethora of amazing applications for music making, from full-on DAWs to individual synthesizers to replicas of classic amazing synthesizers. You can totally have your entire production setup uh, housed within an iPad, basically, or even an iPhone. However, if you're on Android, then you have far less options. And uh, by far and away, the best option is an app by Elf Audio called Koala Sampler. It's a sampler and sequencer that is kind of a digital version of the PO33KO by Teenage Engineering, or PO133 Street Fighter. You have four different banks of 16 sample slots. You can then take those samples and sequence them across 32 different patterns, and each pattern can be up to 64 bars long, by the way, so two thumbs up from me on that. You can then go into the Perform section where you find, uh, well, basically punch-in effects, uh, and you can also chain your sequences together, and you can do things like record your song uh, and export it as a wave and all kinds of other features. The best part, though, about Koala Sampler is that the bass app and the Samurai expansion, which I believe unlocks time stretching and a piano roll and a few other things, uh, together, I believe those are less than 10 US dollars for, for everything. Uh, so it's really, really great uh, for music makers on a budget. Now, of course, if you're on a high-end Android phone, like a new Pixel, or, you know, the latest Samsung, you're going to have no problems with anything and it's going to be a terrific experience. But today I want to try to run Koala Sampler on a much less expensive device. So this is my Motorola Moto G Play, I believe it's called, the 2021 edition. And uh, I bought this phone straight up, unlocked. I went into Best Buy and just bought it last year, last April, for 99 US dollars. No contract, no payments, nothing. Just the device itself, 99 US dollars. I bought it as a quick replacement for my Google Pixel 2 that had finally bit the dust after three long years. And no, I haven't upgraded the phone since then because, uh, well, I work from home now. I don't really leave the house. And, uh... This is perfect for watching YouTube as I fall asleep, and that's about all I do with it. But today, we're going to see if Koala Sampler can at least be manageable, at least be somewhat usable on a budget Android device such as this. So, one nice thing about this being a budget device is that it has a headphone jack, <laughs> which is somehow a budget feature only these days. That's kind of sad. Uh, it should be noted that you can use the app uh, in portrait or landscape mode. For the purposes of video, I'm going to use it in uh, landscape today. Now, the area that I'm expecting major performance uh, hits is in latency. I think that it's going to be pretty difficult to finger drum, and uh, I'm not even sure if using a MIDI keyboard is going to be possible, but we will give that a shot. Don't don't worry. So as you might be able to see here, uh, there is a level indicator right there down the middle. Uh, it's actually picking up my voice. So we're going to first sample using the phone's built-in microphone. I'm just going to uh, hold down a pad right here and make a bass drum noise. Mm. Okay, that actually was pretty quick. Um, we can see here's our waveform. I'm going to try that again, actually. So if I click delete, It'll ask if I want to delete the sample. You know, it seems pretty responsive so far. I'm going to hold it up to my face now. Mm. 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 There we go. That sounds much better. So let's go into edit now. And uh, we can now trim where the start of the sample goes. And yeah, this is like really responsive. Mm. Okay. Mm. So I don't know if mm. you can tell, but there is some latency there. Mm. 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 That's okay, though. Uh, you can see we also can change the sample type. Uh, we can reverse it. We can loop it. We can play with uh, a very simple uh, envelope for the attack and release. We can change the tone. We can uh, set choke groups. We can stretch it here. There's a lot this app can do. Of course, then we have volume and uh, pitch and pan. I just lowered the brightness of my phone. Hopefully that helps it show up on camera better. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's go ahead and record a snare drum now. Cah. Cah. 
Okay, you can see right there it actually auto-detected the start point, so that's pretty cool. Mm. 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 Also, these kits are polyphonic, which is really nice. <clears throat> Let's get a hi-hat. I'm going to move the start point and trim the end a little bit. Okay, so now we've got some samples laid out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to finger drum, and we will see how the latency is. <clears throat> Okay, so the latency is pretty bad, not gonna lie, it's very, very difficult to finger drum. However, I bet we could probably still use the sequencer, so let's go to the sequencer. I'm gonna double tap on my sequence, so now we can sequence our notes here. We can see the first line is the kick, second is the snare, third is the hat. So I'm gonna go four on the floor here, snare drum on two and four, and hi-hats across the board. So this is really responsive. Uh, let's hit play. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it's very usable as a sequencer. Uh, let's just try perform mode real quick here. So from here I can chain my sequences and then touch all these uh, different punch-in effects. Cool, so that works pretty well. Now let's pull up a brand new project. I'm gonna discard changes, and let's actually try to sample a real instrument. So to do that, I've got this little USB Type-C to uh, audio splitter here. It's headphone and mic. So I'm gonna plug that into my USB-C jack on the bottom of my phone, and we're gonna go ahead and plug in the PO32 tonic into the mic input here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to sample a kick drum. I'm gonna set the volume on this here. Okay, we do have a signal, that's nice. Here we go. Okay. I just realized it's trying to route audio out of this uh, port as well. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, let's just sample a snare drum, which I know is right here. Okay. And this is a hi-hat. Okay, so now I'm gonna unplug this right here. Let's uh, have a listen and see how it did. Cool, we got our sounds. Now, I'm going to once again plug this in, but I'm going to grab a different PO. I'm going to grab the PO35 speak and just uh, try to sample a tone. And again, normally you'd be able to hear these, it's just because of the weird little setup I've got going on here. Mm. Cool, so we have a tone. Okay, so once again we're going to pop into the sequencer, and uh, we're going to go ahead and sequence the drums here. We'll go... Okay, so here's our drum groove. Yeah, this is honestly super usable. So now what I want to do is take this melodic sample off the speak and play it with a piano. So I'm going to click the piano button. It's going to ask me to choose a sample. I'm going to click the pitched one here. And now... Cool, now we have uh, a keyboard to play it. We can actually pick our scale right here. Again, the latency probably isn't that great. So instead, what we'd probably want to do is just sequence it uh, with the piano roll on that sample. But we already know that will work because the sequencing uh, actually works really well. So instead, what I want to do is plug in an external MIDI keyboard and see if that works uh, smoothly with Koala Sampler on the budget phone. So this right here is my Arturia Keystep, a super lightweight uh, MIDI controller, and uh, it can be powered with just USB. So I've got right here a USB Type-C to USB uh, Micro B connector. The Micro B end is going to go into the Keystep and the Type-C end is going to go into my phone. Now, not only should this power the keyboard, yep, but it should also work over MIDI. So, in theory, I should be able to play this sample on the keyboard. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> no pitch bend or anything like that, but the keyboard... Works just fine. Now there is a little bit of latency, uh, so let's go ahead and try to uh, live input a pattern here. I'm gonna hit record. Okay. 
Okay, so there was some latency. Okay, but it works. It works, though. Uh... Yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend, like, learning how to play keyboard this way. Uh, you know, the latency is pretty bad, but it does work. That is honestly more than I expected. So I think this little experiment was a success. Uh, if all you have is a very budget Android phone and you want to make music, you can do it with Koala Sampler. In fact, it's, I dare say, a pretty decent experience. You kind of have to ignore the live play uh, stuff because the latency is pretty bad. But if you just want to sequence music, if you're not into finger drumming or, you know, trying to play on these little keys, if you just want to sequence, I'd say this is a good experience, even on a $100, very low budget Android device. Also, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but this video is in no way sponsored by uh, Koala Sampler or Elf Audio. Uh yeah. So I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, of course, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay, too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.